Welcome to the fifth video in the MPU configuration. This video is in the continuation from the last one, and today we will see how to use the sub-regions in the MPU. This is the picture from one of the SD's video, and it shows how the region is divided. A region can be divided to eight sub-regions, only if the region size is greater than 256 bytes. Another important point is that, the setting a corresponding subregion bit will exclude the subregion from the MPU region. For example if we have this 8 kilobytes region in the MPU. If we are using subregion, then this 8 kilobytes region will be divided into 8 subparts. This means each subpart will be 1 kilobyte in size. Now, if the subregion setting is 0 cross 3a, then all the positions that are set to 1, will not be a part of the MPU configuration. This region will exhibit the default memory behavior. And all the positions that are set to 0, will be a part of MPU configuration. We will see the working of this. Here I have already created a project, so I will directly take you to the CubeMX configuration. Here the clock is set as usual. In the MPU configuration, I have selected the background region privileged access. The base address is set to 3 million. This is actually the address of one of the SRAMs. I am also using the 8 kilobytes size. Let's disable the sub-regions at first, so it will be easier to compare when we enable it. All access are permitted and the region is set as shareable, and non-cacheable. I am also using ADMA, just like the previous video. Here we have two buffers, each 10 bytes in size, and they are defined at some particular locations in the memory. Here, the copy buffer is located at the start of the SRAM, and the paste buffer is located at an offset of 1 kilobyte from the start of the SRAM. Let's build it once. You can also see the buffers in the memory details. Here is the C data, at the start of the SRAM, and the P data is at 400 offset. I have created a callback for the DMA, and this flag will be set, when the data transfer is finished. Here I am registering the callback for the DMA. Memory to memory transfer DMA don't have the callbacks, so we need to register manually. This parameter here defines when the callback will be called. This you can find in the DMA.h file. This is the ID for the full transfer. And at last, we have the callback itself. Now in the while loop, we will first set the data in the C data buffer. Then start the DMA to transfer this data. Here C data is the source, and P data is the destination. Then we will wait for the transfer complete flag to set in the callback. And we will repeat the process again. As for now we have made this region non-cacheable, so this transfer should work. Before we run this, let me show you how the region is set right now.
Here is the setting for the region. Even if we consider that the region is divided into eight subparts, here all the subparts are set to zero, and everything will be included in the MPU region. Let's see the working now. Here are both the buffers in the live expression. Let's run it. So everything seems to be working all right. Both the data buffers have the same data, so no coherency issue. This is working because we set the 8 kilobytes of non-cacheable region in the MPU, and both the buffers are placed in that region. Now let's go back to the QMIMX and configure the sub-regions. Right now every region is included in the MPU, and we will exclude the PData from it. To do that, we need to set a 1 in the second position, and that means we need to write 0 cross 0 2, in the MPU sub-region settings. Everything else will remain unchanged, and we will just exclude the PData region from the MPU configuration. This means the PData region will exhibit the default memory behavior, where it is a cacheable region. Let's see what happens with this configuration. We will keep our program same as before, and run it. So everything is working fine here also. Let's understand what's going on. Remember that we have only excluded the PData region, but the CData region is still non-cacheable. So the CPU writes the data to this region, and since the region is non-cacheable, the DMA is able to copy the latest data from it. That's why we see the same data in the PData buffer also. But if we make the CData region cacheable, the coherency issues should start. To do that we will set the region setting to 0 cross 0 1. This will exclude the C data region from the MPU, and this region will say to the default behavior, which will make it cacheable. Let's test it. Now the P data region is not updating. This is because the C data region is cacheable, and the DMAs keep fetching the cached data, which was the initial data in the buffer. This was explained in the previous video, and is also known as data coherency issue. So we saw even the region was set to non-cacheable, but with the sub-region configuration, the C data becomes cacheable, and we had to face the coherency issue. Now let's see what happens if we change the location of the C data buffer. Here I am going to put the C data in some other location, which is set to zero in the sub-region settings. C100 would be fine. So if we put the C data buffer at this new location, it should follow the MPU configuration, and the buffer should be non-cacheable. Let's make the changes in the location of the C data buffer. Here I am updating the location in the flash script. So we have some error. Here it's mentioned that the memory counter cannot go backwards. Well this is happening because we have defined the higher location before the lower one. We need to define the locations in their increasing order.
Now it builds up successfully. All right, let's see the working now. As expected, now the DMA works perfectly. It's able to copy the newest data from the C data buffer, because the C data buffer is in the non cacheable region now. Remember that only the first sub region was excluded from the MPU, so if the C data is placed in that region, it will follow the default properties of that memory region. But now we have changed the location of C data buffer, so it is following the properties of the MPU settings we did. This is it for this video. I hope things didn't got too complicated. You can ask the doubts in the comments section. This is the last video I have planned for the MPU configuration. But if something new comes up, I will make another video. This is it for now. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.